Well, welcome back, guys. So we have our work cut out for us. I want to get the car down off the jacks, take it over to the other shop and pressure wash the rest of the drivetrain, the engine compartment, get that all cleaned up and going. And we need to put our engine back together and get it back in the car. So let's do that. And last time, my head was backwards, turned around upside down the entire time. So hopefully I can keep things straight. So I think to start with, I'm going to drop the car down. And before I do that, I want to put on my dipstick tubes and slide my dipsticks in and seal them up. Or at least put bags and zip tie them over this so I don't get water down in there. Um, but this is the for the transmission. Man, these flies are biting me! for the transmission and this is for the gearbox right down there um, so I'll crawl, crawl under there get those lower the car pull it over to the other shop if I can find some help and uh, pressure wash this thing and then I will take the tranny pan off and uh, replace the gasket on that I know I'm kind of doing it backward well eh, eh. Eh, yeah, I'd rather kind of clean it up first, I guess. While I'm down here, I was just taking off what's left of my fresh air uh, tubing here, and I saw we had a little mouse problem there, and I was going to take this heater hose off as well, which I will. But I was really worried about this uh, duct work all here. Um, just, you know, I could imagine it was... Uh, plugged full of mouse stuff so I dropped the the fan motor down and everything is actually very clean up in there surprisingly I even ran the scope down here because if I didn't have to take this big old unit off I didn't want to have to you know and uh, surprisingly it doesn't look like anything is in there at least on this end I may have to uh, check it out at the other end um, in the passenger compartment make sure that's all clear but you know how that is when you turn a heater on and you just get a face full of that junk I don't really need that to happen so I'll clean this or actually get a vacuum and suck that little bit out and uh, throw my heater back in and that'll be fine Thought I'd show you this. I spent a little bit of time, not much, just cleaning up in here. Yeah, this would probably would have been painted body color originally. And I do have a quart of the turquoise, artesian turquoise. But I'm saving that for the passenger door when I get to that. The stuff is so expensive anymore. And maybe someday if we ever feel like doing a nuts and bolts restoration on this car, we can repaint under here um, but for now we just spray her semi-gloss black um, I won't be losing any money if we redo it someday um, but it just it just cleans it up so I'm gonna be happy with that then I rewrapped I pulled out the wiring harness when I was doing all that and it's in good shape but I rewrapped all of that and put it back in so that's good to go looks original and believe it or not, this piece was a vital artery of positive electrons right here. Um, how that did not burn the car down at some point, I don't know. And I knew about it. when I Every time I had started it and ran it up the road a little bit or whatever, you know, I, I haven't, like, gone more than a couple miles in this car. Um... But that was right here, which of course is hooked directly to the alternator, the voltage regulator, the junction box in the in the car, the ignition switch. So it's pretty vital and could be pretty devastating if that grounded out, you know. So 
thought it was important I replace that. Stayed with the the dumb cables for or the clamps for now. You know those should all be replaced eventually, but the cables are in good shape. So yeah. So I popped the old rear main slash front main seal, however you want to look at it out, and it's the original um, GM three eight five one eight five three number. So either whoever uh, has been into the engine in years past put a GM seal back in or they never replaced it. I suppose it's possible that's factory. I don't know. Um, it's also cool to me that these things have a one-piece rear main. I mean it took quite a while for the rest of the Chevy uh, Chevy engines to catch up on that technology. So I think, by the way it feels, I can just push this in by hand. I don't have to get out a, a driver and a hammer. And I'd much rather press it. See if 200 pounds will do it. I'm about ready to put my timing cover slash bell housing, I guess back on and wanted to make sure my timing was correct now the way it ran when I got it running I mean we had plenty of power and it was quite zippy you know quite full of spunk you know I guess I got that for my mother she had plenty of spunk so you know it didn't it didn't act like a car that was a tooth off or anything but I got really concerned uh, when I tried to time it now there's a chart in my manual, and I'll put it up here. Um, and I haven't just found it in the manual, but I've done some reading and some watching of um, guys that know a little bit more about these engines than I do. And they say you go by the keys, the keyways, on both shafts, not necessarily the timing marks, which seems very strange to me that they couldn't get both correct um, my cam timing mark is 12 o'clock and it's hidden of course behind this hub here on the crankshaft um, but what you want is your keys 90 degrees so cam key 6 o'clock due south uh, crank key nine o'clock due west they're at 90 degrees with each other I know it's kinda of hard to see especially that crank one with the red light there but um, you know that's pretty much dead center inside my crankshaft there and that line is right on there so the keys are the keys are set now I have a punch mark here right there that is way off um, I don't know if that was, that's a factory mark or if that's something a guy did uh, when this thing was rebuilt. I'm pretty certain I am not off a tooth. A, because of the orientation of my keyways, and B, the power that it had when it was running. If you've ever driven a vehicle where the timing set was off a tooth, you pretty much know it doesn't have that so I'm pretty confident this is okay I was a little worried I was dr I, I really don't want to have to split this block apart but uh, I think I'm just gonna go with it that we're okay um, so I guess I'll get this gasket on and the cover back on
any of you ever do anything that you thought was just so smart at the time? Trying to cover your own rear, and it ends up just biting it instead. Some of you may have caught on already. and I mean, who am I kidding? Maybe all of you did but me. If you were here last time, it wasn't until I got my little, my little flex plate that I remembered, Oh, you sorry little so-and-so. You marked this and that with a punch so you get this in the right place again. Not that it matters. Should have used a paint marker. But the, <laughs> the timing mark that I've been fretting about this whole time isn't a timing mark at all. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, touch that with a flap disc. Get that off of there so it doesn't confuse anybody in the future, myself included. Obviously, I need help with that. I'm special! Um, yeah. Ugh, how silly. Anyway, I'm going to do that, and then I will torque our flex plate back on. All right, got that off. Now, what I can see, I can run a pick in through these little hub holes, and they go in there. So it's a through hole going into my crankcase basically, so there's there's potential for oil coming out of these threads. And when I look at the bolts, it doesn't look like there's any sealant or Loctite or anything on them. But I am going to go ahead and put Permatex on them. It's, it's just a great thing. Now, now fly, do you really want to be there? Goodness.
Now up top on the breather cover and everything, I am basically just, I'm hitting everything with good old Permatex Forma Gasket. Um, I don't want to have to be concerned about possible electrolysis between the steel and the aluminum, any corrosion that might have formed there, anything like that, um, that a paper gasket may not seal up. So we just paint a little bit of this on there and we have instant peace of mind. Looks like I have a little chunk of old gasket there, so I'll scrape that off in a second here. And our PVC PVP PCV tube is on the same side as the dipstick. Get this straight again. You can't get anything backwards because the holes won't line up, so we're good there. I've got to quickly clean up the rest of the bolts. So I'm just going to act like I'm doing it and then uh, we'll uh, pan away from the scene as if it was just done. And you'll believe it, right? Okay. By the way, after the last video, someone asked if I mentioned it or asked if I had done it, I guess, and I neglected the fact to mention it. Um, I'm not really making how-to videos per se anyway. I'm just bringing you along for the ride in this little adventure called life, right? But um, on these Corvair push rods, there's a little side hole drilled on the rock, the rocker end of it. So you just need to make sure you get those Pointing the right direction, you know what I mean? So, just thought I'd pop that one, one off and show you guys that. I'm going to get a couple of valves on this side adjusted, then we'll turn the crank around to rotation, we'll get all the rest. Well, I think one of the last things we're going to do here together, on this video anyway, is throw the replacement exhaust manifold on, on the left side here. I've already uh, come in and, well, I'll just bring you in here. How about that? I've got these little lock keepers, lock tabs on the nuts, and I've already taken it, uh, taken it loose once before. So they're all bent down, which is why I'm not doing it now. That makes sense, right? Oh. 
oil pan makes a great little workbench. Oh, that's lovely. All right, one asbestos diagnosis later. I think we're pretty good to go here. Got my little shield. Yeah, it's, it's the right one, all right. So we'll just put her back together. Now guys, speaking of exhaust, you say, were we? Um, I think it'd be a real kick in the pants to get dual exhaust for this thing, um, especially considering it's bare bones 500. For some reason, that just makes it even better. Um, it'd be a lot of fun on this little six cylinder. Uh, I've thought about having an exhaust shop make up some U-pipes and me finding another muffler. And I've, eh, you know, um, and a dual exhaust kit's like $500 or something, so, and, that, you know, that's not so easy to just fork out all the time. So, that would probably have to come later if we want to go that route, but let me know what you guys think. More than likely, I'll just put the single exhaust back on for now, but it would be a kick in the pants and a kick in the teeth. So, man, that sounds like fun. Other than that, like I said on the... Uh, the previous humble mechanic video I'm gonna stop right now on the engine it's ready to go back in pretty much I'm gonna put some of the shrouds and shields and whatnot back on but now we're gonna turn our attention to the rear suspension since I can get in the engine compartment really easy and uh, access everything so we're gonna turn our attention to that on the next video with the Corvair we're still working on the 71 Chevy pickup at home painting that um, so Thanks for coming by and come back around. We'll, we'll always be working on something as long as we can, right? All that to say, thank you so much for spending this little bit of time with me. God bless you guys. We'll see you on the next one. Here comes the flop sweat again.